Hello everyone, this is Rahul Malhotra from SFDC Stop and welcome to another video tutorial in simplifying the callouts in Salesforce tutorial series. So in the last tutorial, if you remember what we did, we actually uh, installed HTTP callout framework in our org using the deploy to Salesforce button and we performed a callout to our SFDC Stop blogs API which is at uh, this particular URL that is sfdcstop.herokuapp.com slash blogs and uh, we got the response from the API inside Salesforce uh, by executing three code, code uh, statements that are there in the readme. So what I did in the last tutorial after installing the framework, I just uh, executed this code snippet in my developer console so I can show that show you that quickly. Uh, you just need to open the anonymous window. You need to copy these three statements from the GitHub repository readme and you can click on the execute button to perform a call out from Salesforce. So once you have installed this, installed the framework, everything is ready for you and you can perform a call out to an external API which is which uh, is already having a record in Salesforce. So you can see here that I was able to hit my custom API and I was able to get a response. So in this tutorial, what we are going to do, we are actually going to create a test class for this particular callout. Uh, and we will see that uh, when we are using HTTP callout framework, it, it's possible to create a test class for this callout or for any other callout without even creating a mock class. So if you have watched my previous tutorials, which were there in the Salesforce integration tutorial series or if you have worked on integration previously then you must be aware of that whenever we are going to perform a call out within a test class we actually need to create a mock class first of all so that we can set up the fake response there and then we perform a call out using our test class right but uh, while using this framework we don't need to create a mock class and we can actually uh, cover our code which is actually performing the call out very easily Okay, so what I did here, I actually created a new class named as SFDC Stop Service. Inside this class, I have a method named as get SFDC Stop Blogs. And inside this method, I just copied and pasted the code snippet which was there in the GitHub uh, repository readme. So this code snippet is doing nothing. It is actually an it is actually uh, performing a callout to my SFDC Stop Blogs API. So this is the metadata API record name that I'm passing in the constructor. So in, in case you want to uh, you want to get more information what's happening behind the scenes when I'm uh, and how can I perform a callout within by using two lines of code. You just need to watch my previous tutorials. So I have explained this stuff in detail there. So what I'm doing here, I'm just creating an instance of HTTP callout service. I have specified my custom metadata record name and uh, I'm performing a callout and I'm getting the response uh, and I'm returning this response uh, from this method itself, right? So instead of instead of those three lines of code which were there in my developer console, I can actually replace these three lines of code uh, with my Apex class that is there now. So I can just use SFDC stop service and I can use get SFDC stop logs method to perform a callout. And this SFDC stop logs method will return me uh, an instance of HTTP response. And I can get the response body from this response using get body method. And uh, I can cover that up in uh, a system.debug. And I can click on execute, right? So you can see here that this class will actually do the same thing as we did previously uh, in the previous tutorial. But now our callout is inside a method which is actually present in a class. Because I mean in real scenarios what we do, we actually have a class, helper class and we have a method inside, inside which we are actually performing a callout. So it depends on the requirement. You can have some something extra also before performing a callout and you can have you can have something like uh, you can parse the call out here. Uh, I mean the call out response that you are getting and you can do some other stuff, right? But uh, here what we are doing, we are actually just uh, uh, performing a call out and uh, this call out is being performed in the get SFDC stop blogs method of this class. What I'm going to do right now, I'm actually going to create a test class for this SFDC stop service class. So let's have a look at the test class now. SFDC stop service test uh, is the name of my test class and inside this test class I have a simple method which is named as get SFDC stop blocks test and this get SFDC stop blocks test is actually testing uh, get SFDC stop blocks method of my service class right uh, inside this test method you can see simply that we have a test test start test and we have a test stop test and uh, inside this test uh, I mean between these two statements what I have but I have simply an instance of my HTTP callout service mock 
as I told you that whenever you are using this framework, you don't need to create a mock of your own. So you can use the inbuilt mock class, which is there as a part of framework. So its name is HTTP callout service mock. You just need to create an instance of this class. And what it requires in the constructor is that uh, you can send the response code as well as the response body in the constructor. You know, uh, when we perform a callout uh, from a test class, uh, I mean, when we are, whenever we are calling whenever we are calling some code snippet or let's say some method of a class which is actually performing a call out inside a test method what we need to do we actually need to set up a mock so that uh, actually in actual salesforce is not performing a call out salesforce is simply getting the fake response that is uh, there in the mock right because uh, i mean the reason for this is if i talk about is that uh, uh, most of the third party apis have billing according to the hits that you make to their API. So let's say I hit a, I hit a third party API one time or 10 times or 100 times. So they bill accordingly, let's say $0.01 per hit or something like that. So in order to, in order to, you know, uh, stop uh, hitting the APIs actually when you are performing when you are actually running a test class uh, salesforce gave us an option to create a mock so that's why we use we actually create mocks and we use that whenever we are performing a call out inside a test method. So SFDC stop service class and the get get SFDC stop blocks method of SFDC stop service class is actually going to perform a call out as we have already seen uh, this in my in our Apex Anonymous window that this statement actually performs a call out and uh, get the response from the API. So this statement is responsible for performing a call out. But what we did before this statement, we actually created an instance of our mock class and we we tell Salesforce that hey Salesforce, you don't need to actually uh, hit the third party API, you need to use this response code, which is 200. And you need to use this response body, uh, which is this fake response body uh, as a response from the API whenever I'm going to run this test method. So Salesforce now knows that uh, whenever you are going to hit an API uh, inside this inside this test method, that API will return a response, which will be having a response code of 200 and a response body, which is mentioned above. So what we, what you need to take care of whenever you are setting up a fake response body is that the response format should be the same. Like uh, if I talk about here uh, in our actual API, you can see here that my response format is like I have a key author and then have a key and then I have a name of that author and then I have a key as blogs, which is having a JSON array. And inside that JSON array, I have actually, I should say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, nine objects I should say inside my JSON array, right? But uh, here in my fake response body, I can simply have one or two uh, blogs inside my JSON response array. So what matters here, like you can see, uh, this is a second blog uh, of which I'm talking about and this is the first blog and this is the blogs array. So what matters is that you should have the, you should have a similar kind of structure, but uh, the number of records or the number of, the number of, uh, 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 I should say the amount of data doesn't matter because you just need to have a similar structure because uh, most of the stuff, most of the times what we are doing, we are actually parsing this response using wrappers. Uh, so here, you are, here we are not doing that because of uh, simplicity, but uh, we actually parse this response and do some kind of operations. So that's why it's it's uh, it's a good thing if you are having a having a response, a fake response in the same format as we have from the actual API, right? Okay, so what we did here, we actually created an instance of mock class. We passed the fake response code and the fake response body, and we used test dot set mock method to actually set this fake, uh, this fake response mock class, right? So test dot set mock method actually receives HTTP callout mock dot class in the first parameter, and it receives an instance of your own mock class in the second parameter. So here we don't need to create a mock class because we already have that as a part of the framework. So I just pass this instance of uh, HTTP callout service mock uh, in the test.set mock method. After that, we performed a callout uh, inside our test method and uh, we got the response from the from the API. So this response is nothing but a fake response that I set up in the mock. So I have my system.assert equals um, set up here, which is actually checking that the response code, response code should be the same, uh, which is coming from my response. So I checked whether the response response code which is uh, there in my response from the api uh, it it should be it should be the same response code that i actually passed in while creating a mock and the response body that i am getting in the response uh, it should also be the same response body that i passed while creating a mock right and in case there is any error, I actually I did an error message that response code should be this code and response body should be this response body, right?
so here you can simply see that uh, i mean this is this is how easy it is to create a to create a test class and you don't need to create a mock class at all whenever you are using the framework you can simply pass the response code and the response body uh, to perform a call out right and you can cover you can cover your call outs very easily by having this test class so what i'm going to do i'm just going to run this class uh, in front of you right now and we'll check whether the code coverage is good or not so I'm going to open this class, which is named as SFDC Stop Service Test, and I'm going to run this test class, right? So I'm going to click on Run Test, and here you can see that my test class ran successfully, uh, which is named as SFDC Stop Service Test. And if I have a look at the code coverage, I can see that my code coverage is 100%. So that uh, that is my callout is covered very very uh, clearly and uh, it is giving me 100% coverage for my callout. So this is how easy you can create a test class for a callout uh, and you don't need to create a mock class at all whenever you are using the framework. Even if you have some other things, I mean, uh, there, there may be some questions from your side that uh, what if I have uh, I have some headers coming in the response or let's say uh, my response is in JSON format or sometimes my response is in XML format, let's say, of my HTTP callout. So I need to set a response header accordingly and I, I need to check the response header while passing the response, right? So uh, HTTP callout service mock actually have a number of getter and setter that you can use. For example, if I need to set a header, I can use a set set response header uh, method here, which is having a key and a value. So let's say my key is nothing but uh, let's say uh, it's, it's content hyphen type. And let's say my value is uh, applications slash json so i can i can set any number of headers here uh, when i'm whenever i'm you know creating a mock call out and uh, even if you have a blob kind of response you can set a blob body uh, using set set response body as blob method or if you even if you have something else let's say you yeah i mean uh, you know want to have a body as a blob you have you want to have a string as a blog there are a number of getter and setter that you can explore uh, that you can use to perform to create a mock response right so this is how you can perform a call out uh, from salesforce and you can create a test class for your call out very easily you don't need to worry about the mocks that is handled by the framework you just need to specify uh, which fake response you want to return and you are done right so I hope you like this tutorial everyone and uh, in the next tutorial what we are going to do we are actually going to link two salesforce orgs and I am going to perform a call out from one salesforce org to another salesforce org and I will get the response there because you know I mean in real life we can have such scenarios where where we have a requirement that uh, I need to create a backup of my salesforce org and it should be updated regularly let's say once in a week or once in a day or something like that and I want to have my accounts and contacts replicated over there. So we are going to do that kind of stuff in the next tutorial. And uh, if you want to have a look at the code that I use in this tutorial, you can just go go to HTTP callout framework tutorial series repository. I will give the link in the description. And uh, you can just have a look at single callout test branch of this repository. And inside this, you will find the default folder and the classes folder, which will be having SFDC stop service and SFDC stop service test class there, right? So, uh, I mean, in this way, you can perform a call out and you can create a test class for your call out very easily using this framework. So do do give a try to this framework and let me know your use cases, what you are facing, if you're facing any difficulty implementing this or anything else. And stay tuned for the next tutorial. We'll do a bunch of cool stuff in the next tutorial. Till then, have a good day. Bye bye.